welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment industry. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And we have returned once again. Happy, happy Monday to you and to <laughs> all your friends. I hope that this weekend was a great one and I hope we can make your Monday a little more bright. Yeah. But on that note... We are indeed back to talk about a movie this week. Last week we talked about a video game. Yes. This week we're talking about a movie. <laughs> okay. And we were not originally going to talk about this movie this week. We were not. We were going to talk about something that tied in directly to the video game. Right. In fact, our original plan, we had discussed this, was there's a screening of said movie at HauntCon. Yes. It does not conflict with either of my talks. Right. So we were going to go to that screening, take studious notes... And talk about it next available episode after Haunt Con died down. But this movie hit Netflix January 2nd. Mm -hmm. And Haunters Hangout and various other Haunter groups we are members of were a flutter about it. Yes, that's fair. And so we are covering it early. We are rearranging our programming. Right. To make this one happy, we will return to our previously scheduled programming, which we never told you about, so <laughs> you don't care. Well, we may have. We may have at some point, but yes... If you do want to learn about our scheduled programming, though, <laughs> do take the time to follow us at hauntweekly.com. Also, we are on Facebook at Haunt Weekly and Twitter at Haunt Weekly. Finally, you can go to tinyurl.com slash hauntweekly to go to our YouTube channel, where all our archived episodes are for your easy streaming needs. Yes. Now, if I sound a little different this week, there's a good reason for that. I am dead in a zombie. <laughs> I don't think that's quite true. Really? It's not? No. It just feels that way then. Yes, I am yeah. sick. I've, it's actually been kind of a weird week because I have been inundated with an ear infection for a while. Right. Got on antibiotics for that, started finally beating that back, and then got stuck with a head cold. Yeah. So I'm like, my son, I don't feel that bad. Yeah, at least you're already on antibiotics, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, I don't feel that bad, but man, do I sound weird, and... Man, does my face feel like when I lean forward, do I feel like it's just like the water's rushing, you know, to the front of my face. It's very unsettling. Yeah. <clears throat> so I will be coughing and sniffling and probably blowing my nose and doing other gross things. I apologize for that. I do hope to be better by haunt con. I probably will be. I have plenty of time. Yeah. And I know me. I tend to recover from things very, very quickly. So, yes, I, I, I don't think this will impact our haunt con plans, which we'll be discussing in just a minute. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, just letting you know, for this episode, I'm a little sniffly, and forgive me. Yes. However, if you need gross sounds for your haunt, feel free to take snippets of Jonathan <sighs> sniffling. <laughs> <sighs> there we go. I'm public domaining that sound effect. Now you can have that. <laughs> have fun. But, yes... On that note, a quick reminder, I have been confirmed to speak at HauntCon. I will be at HauntCon next weekend. Yes. <coughs> These talks are less than a week away. I really better recover. Yes, yes, you should. I have two sessions. First, Friday, January 12th, 3.30 through 4.30. I will be doing how to make a website that sells your haunt. And then Sunday, the 14th, 9 to 10 a.m., I will be doing copyright and trademark for haunters. I have done the copyright and trademark talk for haunter... So, uh, previously in Haunt Con, two years ago I think it was, um, not a lot has changed in that, but a lot of people said it was very informative and they wanted to see it again. Here you go, and the... Uh, please bring make, your questions. Yeah, please bring your questions, and the How to Make a Website is one I've not done at Haunt Con, I did it at um, Halloween and Haunt Fest. Right. In front of a record-breakingly small crowd. Yes. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure no one's seen that one. Yeah, not many people. At Basically, least. I got a good practice run, but yeah, you know, it's okay. Yeah, but anyways, so in addition to those two talks, oh sorry, go ahead. Right. In addition to those two talks, I thought I'd give your voice a break for a second. Um, we will be at Barmon Share on Thursday night. So if you're in town on Thursday from eight thirty to ten thirty, at least ten thirty. <coughs> 
It is goth night there. It's a nice little dark bar. Uh, serve some good cocktails. Come yeah. out and meet us. Uh, it is in the French Quarter. Yeah, and it's, not, it's surprisingly not crazily far from the convention center. Correct. In fact, you can probably, and I have not actually attempted this, so please don't hold me to it, get a pedicab between yeah. those two destinations pretty trivially. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sure that that's, that's doable, but if you're staying in one of the hotels on Canal Street or in the French Quarter, it's very walkable. Yes, it is. It's, it's not far at all. Um, and then on Sunday, we'll be getting together after classes end... Uh, to go to Crown and Anchor. We can meet people outside of the convention center and then all of us get on the ferry and take the ride over to yes. the West Bank. Uh, or if they just want to meet us there later by happenstance. And yeah. to be clear, these are places we're going to be anyway. Well, yeah. Even if none of you people show up, we're going to be there. Exactly. Because that's where we're going to be anyway. Yeah. And we kind of were discussing how do we arrange a meetup. Right. And then we remember the easiest way to arrange a meetup is just to tell people where you're going to be. Yep. And say, if you wish to join us, no pressure, come join us. Yes. If you don't wish to join us, understood as well. Yep. There's lots going on, but yes. And also, the really good thing about both of these events is that none conflict with anything at the conference. Yeah. So to recap... Thursday night, sometime from, like I would say, 9, between like 9 and 11 or so, or 8.30 and 10.30. We don't know the exact time we're going to get there. Yeah. At Bar Mon Cher. It's B-A-R space, M-O-N space, C-H-E-R. Yeah. It's about a block off Bourbon Street. It's less yeah. than a block off Bourbon Street. Right. <laughs> Neat little bar. It's goth night. A lot of spooky kids going to be hanging out. It's a fun place to be. Yeah. <laughs> goth night does not officially start until 9. That's why I was thinking maybe get there a little bit earlier. <coughs> In case anybody just wanted to happen to show up, yeah. you know. But it's always quiet. It's a good place to meet. Well, yeah, and even with Gothland going on, it's just still fairly quiet. And, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. let's be honest. At least downstairs it's quiet. This is an elder goth crowd. It's yeah. not a young, trendy yeah. goth crowd. Right. <laughs> So it's it's not going to be a, 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 a rockin' place that you can't talk in, basically. Unless you go upstairs to the dance floor. Indeed. And specifically that one room. Yep. And then Sunday... Sometime after classes end and after the garage sale and all that's over, yep, we will head to Crown and Anchor that is on the West Bank. You will have to either get an Uber and take the bridge, or the ferry is the easiest way because it is literally at the ferry landing on the other side. Right. And the ferry is $2 per person. You have to walk. And you have to have exact change. Exact change. So be prepared for that. The ferry is stupid annoying. I am sorry. Believe me when I say we did not vote on that one. No. Yeah, we didn't have a choice on that one. Not being really. Changed. No, we did not. No. Also, <coughs> in other news at the house, Ellie has created a Facebook page in part from discussions revolving yes. around this movie uh, for Haunt Win Widows. Yes. It's Facebook. It's Haunt Widows. Yes. Um, if you are bringing someone who is not into haunting as you, but likes to see New Orleans and wants someone to hang out with. She will be posting events over on that page um, Saturday and Sunday, noon to four is the time yep. she's looking to be available. And basically it's going to be the same kind of deal where she's going to be places because we're not going to be around. Yep. So she's going to be places and she's inviting you guys, well, your haunt widows, Yes. <laughs> to uh, to join her. And that's male haunt widows and widowers, I guess we should be clear. Yeah. Yeah. It, basically anybody who, any, plus you're one. plus one. Yes, yeah. yes. She called it her plus one. Indeed, that seems perfectly fair. Mm -hmm. um, so she will be doing that once again. That's Facebook. Uh, it's Haunt Widows on Facebook is the group name. Right. Um, I'll be posting a link to that when I do the uh, show notes. Yes. So if you need the actual URL, just go to hauntweekly.com and click the show notes. Yes. And finally, because it was a different bullet point. <laughs> well, you know, we're not very good at organizing this stuff. Yeah. No one ever accused us of being, like, uh, hyper-organized. Right. Saturday, January 6th, was my birthday. The epiphany! Yes, exactly. Start of king cake season um, here in New Orleans. So, I have donated my birthday to Ween Dream. Uh, we will be also posting a link to that and trying to get them a little bit of cash. And here's the thing I love about this is we're only trying to raise about $200 for them. Yeah. That's not a lot of money. We've already raised over half of it. Right. Um, but the main thing about it is Wing Dream is a very, 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 very lean charity. Yeah. Because they're the, they're the charity, and we go back to our charity charity haunt episode. 
you know, haunt related charities episode. Oh, yes. The illness, Jonathan, the illness. Yeah. Um, basically, they're the charity that provides you gently used or even, you know, new costumes right. to kids in need so they can participate in Halloween festivities. Yeah. They get all the costumes donated to them. They have the space they operate out of donated to them. Mm-hmm. They, they get so much donated to them. All the volunteer time. They have very, very few expenses. They yeah. run, you know, on low four figures. Yeah. This $200 really could mean a lot to them. It could have a huge impact. Right. So please, if you can, I will post the link on HauntWeekly.com. Take the time to donate and, you know, help this wonderful charity. I'll have more people enjoy Halloween. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, we have conference reminders. Yay! <coughs> and if Crystal will kick off this week, that will enable me to save my voice a little bit more, as you so duly noted. Okay. I have no idea what the order is now, but hey, it's what we're doing. It, it's your turn, but I'm going first. Uh, January 12th through the 15th. We were just talking about this. This is this week. Yes. It's HotCon Halloween and Party Expo here in New Orleans at the Ernest N. Morial Convention Center. Touring Rise Haunted House, both lights on and lights off tours. The Museum of Death, Demented Design Factory, Escape Rooms at the Mortuary, and a Lights on Mortuary Tour. It includes a Bourbon Street pub crawl and, of course, the ball. Yes. Costume ball on Friday. Yes, indeed. Um, Which is a weird night to have it, in my opinion, but okay. Oh, it's, it's, it's a fine thing. Uh, HauntCon.com for more information on that. All right, and, after that, March 1st through the 3rd, it's the Maze, M-A-I-Z-E, Chicago Corn Party in where? Huh? Chicago, Illinois, at the Chicago Marriott Southwest at Burr Ridge, Touring Coupler's Family Farm, Shinomac Orchard, Go Bears, and more. Learn more at The Maze, T-H-E-M-A-I-Z-E dot com. Then March 22nd through the 25th, it's Trans World's Halloween and Attraction Show in St. Louis, Missouri at the America Center. Pre-convention bus tour visiting Nashville Nightmare and Talon Falls offers a voodoo soiree on Saturday night. Find out more on that on the HaShow.com, H-A-A-S-H-O-W. Then it's the West Coast Haunters Convention, Portland, Oregon, April 13th through the 15th at the Doubletree Hotel. It includes the Nightmare After West Coast Haunters Convention Film Festival with a surprise selection of movies. Shh, they're not telling. This one might be in there that we're about to talk about. Uh, maybe. HauntersConvention.com to learn more. All right. Halloween show and National Haunters Convention presents Halloween Boardwalk Empire. I've got to find a way to shorten that. I'm telling you straight. I think you say that every week. <laughs> I do. Uh, <laughs> and I mean it every week, too. <laughs> Atlantic City, New Jersey, May 18th through the 20th, Showboat Convention Center features zombie volleyball, a hearse show, a costume ball, and much more. Halloweenshow.com. See, that was easy enough to find out more. And then it's Midwest Haunters Convention in Columbus, Ohio. May 25th through the 27th at the Greater Columbus Convention Center, featuring a masquerade party, a zombie walk, and a pre-convention bus tour with haunts to be announced. Learn more at MidwestHauntersConvention.com. And now we have to do a bit of an edit, everyone. This is a little difficult for us. Yeah, something we've never done before. We've never done this before. Hopefully we'll never do it again. Editing, what's that? But yes, basically... um, after this episode was released, um, we were contacted by the film by the director producer of this film, um, and he t- and John Schnitzer's his name, and he had issues with some of the things we said in the original version. Yes. Now, it doesn't. No, our review and our feelings on the film itself don't change. Right. But we are going to re-record the review and omit some parts that didn't impact the review. Right. And also. We were given more information. Yeah, we've been given additional information. So, and it, it's kind of an awkward moment because we really can't talk about the information we were given. Right. A lot of it. Right. But, you know, our goal was never to cast aspersions or throw shade or... To no, 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 no. We, we, we strongly disagree with this film, at least the version of it that we, were, we saw. Right, on And Netflix. we're going to talk more about that in a second. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but um, our goal was not to accuse anyone of impropriety or to say anything like that. What was that? And we tried to mark our words very carefully not to say that. And we're very sorry if anyone got that impression. Yeah. That was not our goal, just to repeat it. Um, that being said, like I said, we have new information now that we, unfortunately, like I said, really can't talk about. Right. So we're just going to say, um, as far as the background of this film goes, 
Well, first off, we need to do three injections here. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm getting things out of order. Like I said, we're trying to be as transparent and as fair to everyone as we right. can. Trying to be as fair to our opinion, as fair to John, and as fair to you guys as listeners as we can. Yeah. So if there's a little bit of awkwardness going on, I apologize. It's just us trying to, you know, keep all the plates spinning and make sure that everyone is treated as fairly as we can. Right. Um, the three things we want to say is, one, there may be spoilers. Yeah. I can't... We're, we typically don't put spoilers in our reviews, but with this right. film, it's very hard to discuss it without some spoilers. Yeah. And we didn't realize that until we started talking about yeah, it. Yeah, in the previous review. We didn't realize that was going to happen, so we didn't do it last time. And that was on us. That's our mistake. Um, so there may be spoilers. We are probably going to talk about some things toward the end of the film. Yeah. Um, because we kind of have to, like I said. So... Don't listen to this if either spoiler if spoilers bother you and you haven't seen the film. Yes. Fair? Fair. Second thing, we watched the Netflix version. We mentioned this in the first review. Right. Uh, but basically, we watched the Netflix version, and we now understand that there's a lot of different content in the Blu-ray and DVD version. Yeah. We're probably going to pick that up at some point. It was not available to us to review. No. And so... Well, we, and based on the Netflix, we didn't have the desire that we have now. Yes, to check to, it out. To check yeah, it out. Yeah, watching the Netflix version did not inspire us to go pick up the Blu-ray. The no. additional information we have did. Yes. Fair? Fair. And finally, um, like I said, um, basically this is a re-recording and an edit. Yeah. It, our opinions on the film itself have not changed. No. And I think that will come through pretty clear in our, our opinions on... At least one of the subjects of the film has not changed. Right. Uh, but long story short, you know, we want to be fair and honest and transparent with you guys, and so that's what we're doing today. Yes. So on that note, everyone, thank you for your patience as we got through that. And now we do have to ever so briefly discuss the background of the film, but we're going to keep it in the loosest terms this time. Right. Because long story short, this was a Kickstarter-funded film, Haunters, The Arts of the Scare. It was um, launched on Kickstarter in October 2014. It went through several iterations, and long story short, was finally released in September of this year. Of 2017. Of, of, of 2017. Well, yeah, okay, I, I'm still well, I running know. 2017 on my checks. I know. What checks? <coughs> that's true. I haven't written the what checks. What are you writing checks for? Yeah, that's true. If I were writing <laughs> checks, I'd probably be writing 2012 on them, because that's yeah. how long it's been. But the point remains, yes, um, I'm still writing 2017 on everything. So forgive me for that one, but yeah. Long story short, it came out October. It came out uh, September 2017, and hit Netflix January 2nd, where it immediately got a lot of attention in haunter communities all over the interwebs, in particular on Facebook. Right. Um. And so yeah, it is a, and the, basically the idea behind this film is that it's a documentary about haunters, and we've seen other documentaries about haunted attractions. Right. Um. And and we have a list of some that we still want to see. Yes. We do. We have not seen them all, oddly enough, yeah. uh, because when we sit down to watch film, usually we uh, we choose lower quality stuff. Yeah. Let's be well, honest. Well, not only that, but uh, some of these we've just learned about. Yes. But anyways, so yeah, the, the main complaint that we had about the film, and that most other haunters did as well, it seems, that we've seen the reviews of. That, that we've seen people talking about. Yeah, online. Let's be clear on that. Yeah, that we've seen online has been that the film had a very, very heavy focus on Russ McCamey and McCamey Manor. Yes. And long and short of it is, I personally don't consider Russ McCamey a haunter. No. I have never considered Russ McCamey a haunter. I have said repeatedly on this podcast, I do not consider Russ McCamey a haunter. Right. And to put him as, I mean, he was pretty much 45 minutes to an hour of this film. Right. was and, a Russ McCamey story. Yeah, and that is our opinion. Yeah. That he is not a haunter. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is all opinion. Yes. But yeah, I mean, the bottom line of it is, we do not feel what he does is a haunted attraction. Not in the sense that we think of haunted attractions. And not no. in the sense that most people, in fact, in this film, when they spoke with other people about you know, what is, you know, what these extreme haunts are doing, they felt the same way. Right. That that's not a haunted house. It's not a haunted attraction. We don't know what it is. We don't have a term for it. Yeah. But it's not a haunted attraction. It may be adjacent. It may be somewhere in the field, but it's not a haunted attraction. Yeah. And yes, that is a, a the problem. This film is called Haunters, and the bulk of it was spent on someone who I don't feel was representative of that community. Yeah. Um... 
<clears throat> so yeah, the film was largely his story. It told the tale of how he operated his original haunt. And it's important to remember, the reason we mentioned the dates of the Kickstarter is that when the Kickstarter began, the film was going into post-production, er, post at least early post-production. Right. And the result of that was most of the film was shot previously. Yes. So we're talking 2012, 2013 McCamey Manor stuff here. Right. <laughs> Which, if you've been keeping up on the news with Russ McCain here, which you can do on our news podcast every four episodes here on <laughs> Weekly, um, basically, you know, you know, a lot has changed yeah. since this was recorded. Right. Um, a lot has gone down, and in fact, uh, the latest Russ McCamey news I'm aware of is that he is opening or doing some kind of new debut right. at his new haunt in Tennessee, I think it is? I believe so. Yeah, in Tennessee. So, long story short, that's the latest thing there. He's no longer in Southern California, which is where all this took place. Most um, of it, at least. Yeah, most of it. Most of the, well, the McKinney Manor stuff took place yeah. in Southern California, is what I'm trying to say. Um, but, yeah, both, basically it was his story. It was how he operated his original haunt, what he did with the YouTube, what he did um, as far as recruiting people, getting people in there, etc. Um, how he terrorized his neighbors, one neighbor in particular, who I have some serious questions about. Yeah. Um... But and how he attempted to open up a pro haunt. Yes, and I just confirmed that it was um, Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay, he attempted to open up a pro haunted house. Basically, there was a, a horse farm, mm -hmm. or that he had a relationship with. And one thing right. I did learn from this film about Russ McCain, I did not know, yeah. is that he is a wedding singer also. Yes. Which that is not a role I would have paid for him. I've got to be honest with you. No. You asked me really. what he did. I, did. I had no idea what he did for his day job. Honestly, I never really spend much time thinking or looking into Russ McCamey other than being upset he was referring to himself as a haunter and being mad at people that went along with it. Yeah. I never really put much thought into it. But yeah, to find out he was a wedding singer was definitely a surprise to me. But yeah, he, he attempted to open a pro haunt on the property he had, some, had a, a business connection with and it, it, the, the movie was unclear. I think Russ was unclear about it too. He'd gotten some permits, but not others. And then people got mad. Right. And the county wanted more permits still, so he had to shut it down. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing. It's like, I, I, uh, you know, on one hand, part of me is a little bit sympathetic there. Yeah. Because I have heard of haunts that I know and love yeah. that have struggled to find a place to exist because, you know, permitting issues yeah yeah we, fact, how many times have we heard the story of yes we were approved and then we go out there and then they have to build like this giant water tank yeah the, for the fire suppression yeah system because yeah, what the water they had, tank yeah that that was a crazy story we heard that one from the in line at house of shock or the yeah. people we or we had a, a podcast recently um where they were talking about how they would go out to all these places and sort of talk to the neighbors and hold town halls. Right. And they kept getting bizarre questions. And even though the neighbors weren't outright angry, they were uneasy. And, right. And they're doing something far, far less, you know, extreme than what Russ McCamey's doing. Right. Well, and the other thing was, is that at least from what was shown, it, <coughs> it seemed like they were, they intentionally picked a spot on the property that was not seen by the neighbors. Um, a, to not annoy the neighbors. Yeah. But, you know, well, and, and that's probably, that, that, is, that is what it said, actually, was to, to not bother yeah. the neighbors with the sounds and things of this haunt. But the thing about it is, is the haunt he was, Experience. and he talked about some of the things he was doing in it, and it just sounded completely unsafe. Yeah. The, the, the things he was building and the things he was going to have people do sounded ridiculously unsafe. Well, and some of the things that were shown. Yes. Um were unsafe yeah i mean there's there's no question in my mind that some of that was definitely unsafe it was unsafe physically mentally yeah and which legally. is and and legally <coughs> which is you know what he prides himself on yeah is pushing those boundaries yeah and i will say that i did appreciate the look into mckamey manor in a 40 minute bite or however yeah. much of the film it was instead of trying to watch one of the 4 hour films. Yeah. <laughs> and and that may be one that may wind up being the the total problem I have with this movie is more than more than named than anything. Right. If you want to make a Russ McCamey documentary, yep. You know what I'm actually for it. Yeah. I actually support that idea. Yes. I think that's a good idea. But to say that this is haunters and that this is representative of the community, yeah. That doesn't that, that that sits wrong with me. 
Yeah. And like I said, I understand that there's a lot more content out there in the DVD and the Blu-ray version and so forth now. I get that. But this is the Netflix version that most of the public is going to see. Right. This is going to be by far the most viewed version. Exactly. It, I mean, it of the people talking um, in the groups that we mentioned earlier, it's the version that they have seen. Yeah. And it's the version most people outside our community are going to see, too. Yeah. Because it's and, widely available. Um, and the thing about it is, is he had access to a lot of wonderful people. There are people in this movie that are absolutely wonderful. Yes. And I loved hearing their interviews. I loved listening to them, and I loved having them talk. Right. And share their passion and share their engagement. But it felt like they were taking a back seat to Russ McCamey. Yes. And, it, and that's, I guess, to me, it felt like almost two separate documentaries. Yeah. On one hand, we're discussing Russ McCamey, and also, I guess, maybe it should have been two docs. Maybe that's way it should have been. And this is all hypothesis here, but maybe do one focusing on the extreme haunts. Yeah. Talk about Russ McCain and also Blackout, which they, they Blackout took a backseat too in this. Right. But Blackout is an example of an extreme haunt who, like, I don't like extreme haunts. Right. I've said that repeatedly. I'll say it again. Yeah. I don't like extreme haunts uh, for a lot of reasons. However, if consenting adults yeah. <laughs> want to do this stuff and pay money for it, Godspeed. And at the very least, the Blackout is doing it right as right as you can at least right they're using safe words they're being cautious about the various activities they do you right. see you know the difference between what the blackout is doing versus what russ mccamey is doing yeah and that is a very interesting contrast it is it is and you see this and meanwhile russ mccamey is hiring 16 year olds to work in his haunt yeah i really don't get that <clears throat> they should not be there it's 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 appalling that they are. That they were, at least. He got rid of them eventually. Yes. But, yes. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, that part was really, really, really frustrating to me. So, again, yeah, but maybe one documentary about the extreme haunts and another one about the haunt community and all the wonderful people that he was interviewing that do represent the industry. People like, you know, Shar and Eric and Donald right. and that group. Yeah. Um, they... They did a great job, and the film also did a good job putting a, a spotlight on the haunt widows and the taxing nature of this, the tax haunting can take on relationships <laughs> right. when you have non-haunt partners, because at least three of the haunters they interviewed, mm -hmm. um, Shar, Russ McCamey, and Donald, yeah. had partners who weren't as into haunting. Yeah, yeah, and, and at different levels, because... Um, Russ's wife actually started out the haunt before it went <coughs> extreme. Mm -hmm. um, but she was she had but she had not participated in it for a while. Yeah, she clearly had very strong reservations about the direction it was going. Yeah, it, it's hard to pinpoint exactly how I draw that conclusion. But yeah. you could see the look on her face when she was being asked. Well, not only that, but she also you know said things um, directly uh, about how she, he would throw out an idea and she would have to reel it in you know yeah. and and that's that's another dynamic relationship you know yeah. um yeah Shar's husband was very supportive i i love seeing him talk about her love of it and her just talking about her love of being a monster yeah and how fun it is and unfortunately she was hurt in a very serious accident while haunting while haunting yeah. <clears throat> and now has to take on lower impact, lower right. risk roles. Yeah. 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 And um, his... And, and it obviously breaks her heart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's obviously... And then you have Donald, whose wife... Yeah. Wow. They, I mean, they seem like newlyweds in the film. Yeah. Um, I, I think they were yeah, that, fairly recent it doesn't at say, that point. It doesn't say uh, definitively that I could remember... But, yeah, they, they felt like newlyweds at the very least. Yeah. And it was causing some very serious strain in the relationship. Yeah. Um, and it, was, it, was a, uh, it was rough to watch. How, yeah. And, you know, I can understand that because when you're in a new relationship, you know, you, you have that honeymoon-ish period. Even it can last for years, by the way. I'm yeah. not talking like actual honeymoon here. Where you have to be close to them. You have to, you know what I mean? All you, your world is all encompassed by this person. Yeah. And you haven't figured out that balance. Yeah. Because, you know, and, and when something like haunting comes in and takes them away for extended periods of time, mm -hmm. it can be rough. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, it definitely can. It definitely takes a toll. And you have to learn how to navigate that and hopefully, you know, uh, share some experiences. 
Yeah, I really did enjoy that part, and I do think it was a very valuable discussion. Yeah. And I mean... And it sparked other discussions yes. that, that we saw. Yeah. The whole conversation, I mean, the whole revitalized conversation about Haunt Widows has mm -hmm. been really, really good. It's part of the reason why Ellie has launched her Haunt Widows uh, Facebook group. Right. She was planning on doing it this summer. Yeah. But since the conversation was already going... Yeah, she decided to do it now. Right. Um, and I think that's a good thing, because... Who knows if it actually would have launched in summer or not, honestly. Yeah. We, we, we In this household, we always have projects we talk about doing, and only a few of them have firm dates. Yeah. And some of them stick around, though. I mean, we've been doing this forever. Yeah, that's a crazy idea. 110 episodes in, over two years. Yeah. You know. But anyways, um, yeah, I really did enjoy it. I mean, then that's the thing. It's like the parts of it that were not about McKamey Manor, I really enjoyed. Yeah. And the parts about McKamey Manor I probably would have enjoyed if I'd been expecting a documentary about McKamey Manor. I think one yeah. of the reasons why it, it, it felt so weird to me was because if you look at the promotional material for it, they use images from Haunted Overload. Yes. The big, giant props and all that. And mind you, the, the, the art looks really, really cool. <clears throat> and Haunted Overload, if you go back to our um, Haunt Bucket List episode, it was on there. <laughs> And it, it, it's it's a haunt I am so desperate to go to, I am willing to brave October <laughs> in that New Hampshire. It's right on the border between New Hampshire and Maine. I, always, I kept saying it was in Maine at one point. Yeah. It turns out it's actually on the New Hampshire side of the border, but it's like right there. Yeah. So, But yeah, I'm willing to brave that borderland between the two in October. <laughs> Yeah. To go see. And well, it's an I mean, outdoor haunt. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we, we should definitely go up that way because there are a few others mm -hmm. that I would oh, absolutely. love to see. Absolutely. We'll just have, we'll have to buy a coat that is suitable for that. Yeah. Except right now, I, I don't I, think we own one. I think I might have one. Yeah, I sure. you, on the other hand. Yeah, I sure as hell don't. I've lived, in, I lived south of the Mason-Dixon line ever since <laughs> I've... Ever. Forever. So the funny thing is, <coughs> is that the reason I have a heavy coat... Yeah is my mom was worried about me moving to South Carolina. <laughs> oh, it's so cold in South Carolina. So much different. Yes. Oh, God. I did not realize that. You yeah. never told me that. <laughs> well, now I'm telling you. Now you tell me. I mean, God. <laughs> but, look, really? That's just sad. <laughs> Your coats were fine for South Carolina. You didn't need that giant wool thing that you've got. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But it is awesome, so. You know. But anyways, that's a digression. Yes. But yeah, I mean, the, 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 the marketing material center on Haunted Overload, and when I first heard about the film getting ready to come out, I got excited. Yeah. Because Haunted Overload, I've seen like other things they've done. They've been on various other uh, TV shows and things. I love watching them talk about haunting. These are guys who get the passion, whose energy comes across in everything they do. Right. And they routinely tackle these mind-boggling projects that I just don't even know how they're humanly possible, yeah. much less doing it in the wilderness of Northeast United States. Right. I am blown away by these guys, and they were just not much of the film, not yeah. much, like I said, this version of it. We had all this promotional material for um, <clears throat> for Haunted Overload, and it ended up being about McKamey Manor. Right. I'm fine with McKamey Manor, like I said, being the subject of a documentary, and I do think a documentary about McKamey Manor can be very important. Right. But I do think the con it needs context, and I don't think that context is in a movie called Haunters. Yeah, and I do think that it was good to include the other Haunters' opinions about McKamey. Yes, and they all seem to back up largely what we've said. Yes. Um, which is good, because, you know, it, 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 you know and it's like I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I think McKamey Manor is dangerous to this industry. Because if we continue to believe and treat him as a haunted house, mm -hmm. um, long story short is something is going to happen at McKinley Manor. Yeah. Someone's either going to get seriously hurt, there's going to be a serious lawsuit. The mere fact that it hasn't happened up to now is just pure luck, in my opinion. Yeah. And this is including based on what I've seen in this documentary. In fact, this documentary drove home that point to me. Yeah. <clears throat> and that waiver that he... You know, has everyone signed, will not do much to protect him, despite what he thinks. Right. And it sure as hell won't do anything to protect the industry when the regulation hammer comes down. Nope. Because that's what's going to happen, is if he hurts someone, or, God help us, kills someone, um, 
the authorities aren't going to just come for McKinley Manor. They're going to come for every haunted attraction. The regulations are going to be across the board. And we already deal with a lot of regulations in this industry that, you know, to be frank, some of them are just burdensome and onus and onerous and don't really improve safety that much. Right. And a good example is the one you talked about earlier where a haunt had to put like an actual freaking water tower on top of their haunt because they didn't have a um, adequate line for the spring for their sprinkler system. They couldn't just have um, like a regular sprinkler system. They had to have one that could be cut off from the water main for like five minutes or something like that. Right. <coughs> Enough time to I think evacuate the building was that it, it was it was insane and it wanted yeah. it ended up being this huge expensive project for them. Mm hmm. Um, that nearly cost them their business. So we already run into a lot of regulations. We're already treated by regulators in a very you know negative light. And having something like this happen is just going to make make it worse and make the entire industry suffer. Yeah, and a quick Google search real quick actually does show that at least one person, possibly two, I don't know if the second article I'm seeing, have... Um, have sued. Yeah, but game. the lawsuits really didn't go anywhere, yeah. from my understanding. No one's, no one's yeah. seriously sued right. in the capacity that they really drove it and rode it home. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It, honestly, it seems... Um, it, it, it seems like this film really... God. It's so hard to d really get this part out, but it sound, this film seems like a really good passion project. Yeah. You can tell the people behind this film really do love haunting. They yeah. really do love haunted attractions. Um, but I think they struggle with the documentary side of it a little bit. And yeah. finding a way to tell a compelling story that also showed haunted attractions in a light that is both accurate and, you know, positive. Right. And the thing about it is that that is tough. I grant that. That is yeah. very, very difficult. Um, and as I've said a about a dozen times in this this discussion on it, if they had named the if they had named this documentary just about anything else, no, I don't think I'd have a much as much of a problem with it. No, if you don't put out this film as the end all be all of um, what haunters are, yeah, and then make it almost a majority, if not over a majority, about Russ McCainy, yeah, um, if they hadn't done that, I don't think I'd have as much criticism. It's just it felt and it, it felt like they were presenting this as one thing, and then giving us something else. Right. Um, God. And at, at least through the um, the promotional materials for the Netflix version. Yeah. And once again, we do now know that there's a lot of different material, a lot of extras and so forth, on the Blu-ray. But this, like I said, all we've got at our hands right now is the Netflix version, and frankly, that's the version most people are going to see. Yeah. Um, and I and here's the thing. I do understand Russ McCamey is a, a damn interesting to watch. Yeah. No one's. I, I will criticize him. I am not happy with him. But I will admit two things. He's damn interesting to watch, and he's a damn good marketer. Yeah. Those are two very truthful things I can say about Russ McCamey that are positive. Yeah. Um, and that does make him a good subject for a documentary. Right. I just don't know if it's his own. Yeah, his own documentary, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> and the other thing I think is, and because of the delays the film underwent, I think it might have come out a little late for really Max punch with Russ McCamey. Yeah. The peak conversation about Russ McCamey was five years ago or so. We're yeah. still recording this in 2018. Yeah. It, it was five, four or five years ago. 2015 was the last, uh, the lawsuit, basically. Yeah. yeah. So. So, yeah, I mean... It, it, <laughs> There hasn't, in fact, you know, the, the, and this is where the spoiler comes in. Like I said, he gets shut down at his home, too, yeah. in this. And we know from reading the news, I mean, this is, once again, this is all news here. Right. If you know what's been going on at McCamey Manor, you knew this already. Um, the new, But basically, he got shut down at his home and then has been struggling to find a place to reopen ever since. Yeah. And that is completely removed him from the spotlight. Meanwhile, places like the Blackout... Right. have not only continued operations, but they've expanded blackouts, I think, in three or four cities now. Yeah. It's a nation, a truly a nationwide operation, and all eyes are on them. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it's knowing, knowing what we know, and like I said, I really wish I could say more about that, because it is actually very interesting. There, It does need to be a conversation about those things. Right. But they can't happen now. 
Yeah. Um, and maybe not ever, unfortunately. Um, but the long story short is it feels like, um, you know, this film just came out a little bit too late to really capitalize on the Russ McCaney fever. And, you know, it, it feels like it was mistitled to me mis and, and put out there in the wrong way. I mean, yeah. it's overall, I mean, and the thing about it is this, at the end of the day, it's not a terrible documentary by itself. No. And, it tells and, a decent story. Yeah. It actually tells a couple of decent stories. The story about yeah. Donald's pretty compelling, too. Yeah, I mean... And and, and Char, even though Char's story doesn't really have a narrative, yeah. she's so interesting and engaging. You don't care. She is, because you can just see the passion for yeah. haunting oozing out of her. Yeah, and she's someone who's been doing it for decades. Yeah. She is one of the true elders of this business. Yeah. And so, yeah, she is someone that deserves the praise of a film like this. She is someone that deserves to be in the spotlight. Right. And, she, and, and we would love to meet her. Yeah, Char, <laughs> if you're interested, <laughs> you know, we'd love to have you here at some time. We'd love to have, sit down and give you 50 minutes to talk about this stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> I really think you would have a lot to tell us because, yeah, th there was so much great information in there. Right. But, yeah, it, it is, it's not a terrible documentary. It does tell a compelling narrative. And I, I just worry, like the other haunters in the groups we were we were reading, that it doesn't accurately represent what haunted attractions are about. Right. And that's the frustration. And I'm not going to comment yeah. on what people outside of our community might think of it. No. Because I'm not outside the community. I can't say anything about that. Right. I can only give my perspective as a haunter. Yes. And that is to be completely clear about it. Right. Um. But yeah, I mean. So is this film worth watching? Yeah. I mean, ultimately, yeah. I, I don't think it's a bad film to watch. It's, like I said, it's in Netflix. You've probably already got a Netflix account. That means it's functionally free. You've already paid for it, basically. Yeah. It's not bad. It's worth watching. Just don't go into it expecting it to be about Haunted Overload. Expect mostly a, you know, a McKinley Manor documentary with some other really cool stuff. Superstitial. And thrown right. in, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like I said, and, and the other stuff is really, really, really interesting. And he does a really great job humanizing and telling the story of Haunters and why they got into it. Now, one part I did not enjoy, I'll say this, about the, the non-Russ McCamey stuff was Eric, was not the Eric Donald story. Yeah. He talked about how, um, you know, his family history, basically, and it was yeah. rough. Yeah. I'll, I'll, you can go to the movie for details. I'm not going to repeat it. Yeah. Um, but it, it was rough. Yeah. And I don't... It, they never really tied it into how that made him a haunter. Or right. How, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just kind of there. Yeah. And, and it it seemed to... The only way it would tie into being a haunter is that you must be damaged to be a haunter. And, I, and that's not... I don't think that's the message that the film was no, trying to say. In fact, I know it wasn't, but... Yeah. But that's the way I think it could come across to some people. Yeah. Is that, you know, if you're... Just because it wasn't explicitly tied spelled in. out more. Uh, the only way it was tied in was the brother was now working with him in some capacity. It wasn't really explored that detail. Yeah. It was just mentioned they were working together now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah... It, you know, I don't really... I mean, it may, and that's just it. We don't know if this was important to Donald or what's going on. Behind the scenes, it could have been a very different story. But mm -hmm. long and short of it is that that part was a, a little bit rough, and I don't know how much it really added to things and how important it was to the documentary. It was very important to Donald, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, if there had been a better tie-in to how this made him a haunter, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And how, how this influenced him. Right. I might, it, it would be, I think, a little bit different. It just felt like it was kind of added in and didn't feel like it added much to the movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the long and short of it is, as documentaries go, it's not the worst I've seen. No. It's, it's in many ways, very well done. I just don't think it represents the haunt industry well. Now, the problem is, and this is something that was pointed out um, earlier when we were speaking with John, was that it's movies need conflict. Right. And it's very hard to do anything that's very positive and upbeat and glowing about an industry and make it a compelling movie. Yeah. And that is tough. Yeah. I grant that. It is. And, and so documentaries like this have to ride that line between, you know, 
showing an industry in a positive light mm-hmm. and having the conflict in the narrative. Right. And that's tough. I don't I have an answer to that. I'm not a filmmaker. Mm-hmm. I'm just a film reviewer slash, you know, haunter. guy haunter and other stuff. I mean, so yeah, it, it, it that's just the way it is. Um, all in all, it's not like I said, it's not the worst documentary I've seen. I worry that it did not represent haunters particularly well by having so much Russ McCamey. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I think if they took out the parts with the extreme haunt, made it its own documentary, mm-hmm. that would be really compelling. Yeah. And in fact, I think, and this may be on, this may be just me, this is me literally just talking on my butt, but mm-hmm. it may make it actually more compelling in a weird way. Yeah. Because now you can title it something that's going to get that appeal and that shock value. Right. And talk about that particular side of the industry. And then you can use, you know, I mean, we know he's got enough material for two or three films. Yeah. I mean, he's got... That's on the Kickstarter page. <clears throat> yeah, on the Kickstarter page, he says he has over 200. We found out it's actually significantly more than that. Yeah. So he's got enough for three or four films. Right. Um, maybe it should be three or four films. Yeah. Maybe it should be. I think that's not a bad idea. Or break it up into lots of little mini dogs. Yeah. I, but it, I think this film, in terms of the way it was edited and the stories it told and what it chose to focus on, was a sto- was a movie that tried to please everyone. Yeah. But ended up not really making anyone happy. Yeah. That's my personal impression, though. Yeah. Um, all in all, we do know that there are some people who yeah. who like it. And that being said, you know, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. It's a film. It's it's not you know a religion or anything. It's it's a film. <laughs> We're yep. all going to come away with something different from it. But yeah, long story short, um, if you want a documentary that's primarily about Russ McCamey, here you go. Yeah. It's a pretty well done documentary. It follows him through a very pivotal part of his career. Yeah. Um, and it's overall, like I said, pretty well done. It's just it was not the film I was expecting, not the representation for the industry I was expecting. I'd agree with that. And I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, Crystal, do you have any final thoughts to add before we start wrapping this bad boy up? Uh, no. Well, on that note, everyone, reminder, this weekend is HotCon. We are going to be there, and actually, we are having a pre-HotCon get-together Yeah. on Thursday at 8.30 at Bar Mon Cher in the French Quarter. Hope to see some of you there. It's a beautiful little gothy, dark bar, and it's actually their goth night. Yeah. So be prepared for some dark waves, some goth music, and that type of stuff. It's a lot of fun. Um, There's also quiet places we can talk and chill and mingle. A lot of really great, interesting cocktails. It'll be very apt for us haunty type peoples. Yes, and I will be bringing king cake. It is king cake season. (coughs) Yes, so that is just it. There will be no gatherings that we attend without king cake. Yeah. That's like a rule. Including your talks. Indeed. (laughs) And on that note, yes, I am speaking at HotCon twice. Once again, turn. Like, we did it at the top. I'm not going to repeat it. Yeah. If you missed it, just look at hotcon.com education at a glance. Bada bing, bang, boom. You'll get my times. No problem. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. Um, but yeah, basically, if we do not see you at HotCon, we sincerely hope to see you Monday for the next episode of Haunt Weekly, where we'll be covering HotCon and wrapping up everything that happened throughout it and the talks we went to and the people we met right. and the excellent time we had. We're really looking forward to it. I'm super excited about Hong Kong. Yeah. Well, on that note, everyone, once again, take the time to follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Haunt Weekly and you can find our website at hauntweekly.com and our YouTube is tinyurl.com slash hauntweekly. Until next week, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this has been Haunt Weekly episode number 110, Haunter, Haunters, the Art of the Scare. We will see you guys next time.